Well hi there, this is DBT the and this is the second video of the guide on how to QCDE or how to do QCDE, how to play, you know, you know what I mean. Alright, so this time we're going to be looking at how to do some of the main configurations on Sandronome itself and in the game so that you can play it um, in the best settings possible, at least for this particular mod. So at this point I deleted my configuration file from the previous video so that I start again from scratch on how to set up the engine. Um, but as you can see I have already over here all the things that we installed pre in the previous video. So for this let's just go ahead into single player and excuse me because the sound is going to be really loud and I'm going to immediately lower the volume. So let's just do it alright. Let's go with it. Oh Lord Jesus the volume. All options, sound, uh, here we go okay. An airplane yes, airplane why not. Alright, so volume almost all the way down. Again, this is particularly for my recording scenarios that I'm setting up the volumes this low. Uh, you don't have to go this low. Alright, so this is how the game is gonna, as we saw, this is running on, on, on software render. This is how it starts when you run it the first time. It looks like crap, very low resolution and it's all stretched. Alright, so the first thing we want to do is set up the resolution. Now, it, this will depend on what type of monitor you have. I have a widescreen monitor, so I'm going to set my resolution to widescreen. Uh, so you go to all options, then into set video mode, and all right, aspect ratio. First, I want to select the 16 by 9, which is the usual for widescreen, and then I want to set up my resolution to the right one. Uh, my resolution is a 1920 by 1080, but that's going to be kind of heavy, so let's just leave it at something. Nah, just for this demonstration, let's go with it. Right, changing resolution, and here we go. This is the resolution that I wanted. That looks better now. But still, we are uh, uh, in software render. That's why the colors look kind of kind of crappy. So again, all options, set video mode, and renderer set it to OpenGL. This is gonna set it up. But you have to restart it. So go ahead, exit the game, and then run run it again. Just restarted basically, and now we're gonna have finally the hardware render. Uh, uh, like I mentioned in the previous video, the hardware render allows uh, more colors. Doom by default runs on 256 colors, um, so that's very limited for a mod like this, for the visuals of this mod. So we have to set it up to OpenGL so that it shows better colors. Look at this, that looks much better now. Alright, so just for uh, the first demonstration, let's go into game now the thing here is that the mouse is all over the place feels really weird and I uh, have no crosshair the, the movement moves I mean the head of the character you can maybe see that it goes up and down really really weird the, the thing is dark anyway there's a lot a lot to configure to set it up as I particularly like to play it so all right the first thing we're gonna do is set up the light to a better lightning mode for what we're going to be doing in, in deathmatch. Uh, so go to display options, open GL, preferences, and over here's sector light mode, set it up to standard. I think that's the best compromise between the old school look um, that is way too dark and having it super bright. Uh, this is pretty bright but not completely insane, so I think this is good. Um, because uh, visibility is important in deathmatch, so there is that. Again, all options. Now, what we're gonna do? Well, actually, right now we have a very pixelated look of the of the world. Everything, lots lots of big pixels. You can see them all over, all around. So you can change that. You can set up a texture filter in case you like them. And again, go to display, open GL, textures. And here it is, texture filter mode. You can set it up to linear, bilinear, three linear, and all that stuff. In case you like that. For the purpose of this video, I'm gonna leave it to none. Uh, but know that there's those options over there in case you want to start messing around with the render settings. All right, now as far as uh, setting up the, the the mouse, because the mouse sensitivity is very weird. It seems that by default the engine has some sort of mouse acceleration or filtering or whatever. So I would heavily suggest you to disable that. To do it, go to all options, mouse options, and here it is, prescale mouse movement, set it up to no, and 
what you're gonna notice is that sensitivity changed big time but now the vertical movement is way crazier than horizontal movement so what you need to do in order to make them uh, one to one basically so that they're around the same speed and uh, mouse look speed set it up to half of the turning speed so if it's one we'll set it up to 0 0.5 if you have this higher then set this one to half of this one okay so once you have that the the mouse movement feels much much better uh it's a little low on on sensitivity so i'm just gonna increase it a tiny bit and here we go this feels much better much like how i like to play now i'm still missing a crosser you can go straight into console with the tilde tilde key and type crosshair one and that'll give you a crosshair crosshair series not crosshair or alternatively if you don't like the console you can go to qcd options and over here crosshair type none and you can move the menu options here we go you can see this and you can start changing it so that it's whatever you want like the quake 3 one why not okay so now we have the 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 crosshair and we have better mouse movement now as if you notice as i'm running my head bobs up and down that's usual doom if you go slower it still doesn't it's kind of annoying you see how i'll go like up down up down that's the head bob movement you can i don't like it uh, it's okay if you like it you can have it like that i prefer not to so i added an option to uh, a shortcut more, more like to disable it so go to qcd options all the way up gc doom shortcuts and here it is bob intensity set it up to I don't know something very low and suddenly it's no longer there well it's it's still there you know but much much lower you can disable it altogether if you prefer all right so this is this is looking better this is more how i like the game to be now there's another very important thing that you do need to change and i heavily suggest you to change and for that i'm gonna cheat a little bit freeze summon q2 parasite parasite okay uh, good enough okay so why did i do this to show you monsters and to show you the sprite clipping at this point is the sprites don't clip on the floor that is that they don't go through the floor because the engine by default tries to move the sprites upwards so that they don't do that now that's a problem in in in, in multiplayer and i'll show you why i'll put them over here so that they're on the side of the screen you can still see them go to qcd options GC Doom shortcuts and sprite clipping I actually added to set it up to never that's precisely what you need to do because see how the they change as I move this at this point this guy is clipping heavily through the floor and you would say well that kind of looks kind of ugly let's leave it at smart the problem is that the representation of the sprite of the hitbox is the sprite itself so even though the the monsters don't have a very uh, a very exact hitbox uh, i'll use it as example let's imagine that the hitbox is this square right it reaches all the way over here oh no actually it would reach here this this is where from here below you could shoot them if it changes to smart the line was here and you have all this space that is actually nothing and you would not be able to shoot again this is not a, 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 a big issue for monsters but with players when you're in deathmatch if you set it up to smart they're gonna be changing you know how high they look and that might throw your aim a little bit because you're trying to aim and you're like oh I was shooting at his head and it went through and it didn't kill him well that's why because of the sprite clipping is not matching the hitbox so that's why I always suggest to have it to never even though it clips through the floor I know it doesn't look very pretty but it's again a more accurate representation of the hitbox so I heavily suggest you to have that all right, here's a, a whole bunch of options too, but these are not too important. There's a FPS counter in case you need it, but still. All right, so let's, let me just kill these guys over here. All right, so what's next? Um, setting up your, your keys. So let me start with the regular key bindings of the, of the engine. So go to all options and customize controls and you can start setting up your keys over here if you want to delete this you just press backspace and it will clear these places up so fire i like it to have mouse one and space secondary fire mouse three 
Weapon Reload and Weapon Zoom are not used at all in this mod, so don't worry about that. Use Opens for the doors, um, Strafing, Turn Left, uh, that doesn't matter, so might as well delete them. Jump, Crouch, um, what else do I need? Run in case you want to be, well, yeah, between running and, and, and walking, you know. Uh, chat for Enter, Next and Previous Weapon, I like to have them for E and Q. Weapon slots, I'm not gonna touch this yet because actually in QCD E is a little different. So, an activate item, this is only for loot boxes. Once you finish uh, finish a level, killing all monsters and finding all the secrets, you get a loot box. You can open them with this key. So I set it up to backspace and there we go. All right, so that's the, the standard movement keys, the standard stuff for, for, for Doom. However, uh, we still don't have a key for using our special ability or all the stuff. For that, go to QCD options and it's right at the top. Use active ability, I'll have it to mouse 4. Select the starting weapon, H is fine. Champion information, I have it to F1. So, use ability, well, it's very simple. Then for uh, starting weapon, again, like I've explained before, this only works when you start a game. Press H and I can select my nail gun and there we go, starting weapon. You can also change the starting weapon in QCD options in starting weapon. You can change it here, so it's either way, whichever way you prefer. And the other key that I configured was the the help screen. That is for if you don't know what this champion does, you press the key and it'll give you a little um, a little bit of well the information about this champion, about the ability, about his passive ability and all that stuff. You just have to hold the key for it to show it, uh, you release it and it's gone. Alright, so that's the, the main keys that you need for the game and for QCDE. However, if you're like me or if you from, come from a Quake background, Quake Live, Quake 3, you would like to have your weapons assigned to a specific key. And um, I'm gonna cheat for that, give all. I have all my weapons. So let's say I have my machine gun and I want to use my rocket launcher. Next weapon, next weapon, next weapon, next weapon. It, this it takes a very long time, right? So you can do it by default with the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. But then again, they're not exactly very close to my WSAD configurations. So you may want to configure the keys, uh, the weapon keys to be around your, your main keys. So you can set it up over here in QCD option, weapon binding, and you can set it up over here. For example, my gauntlet, I like it on V. Machine Gun 2, Shotgun 3, although I'll show you a little something else about this. Nail Gun and Super Nail Gun to Z. Rocket Launcher, I like it to R. Lightning Gun X, Railgun F, BFGT. Alright, so in that way I can switch weapons very quickly to whatever I want. I want my Super Shotgun, I want my Rocket Launcher, I want my Railgun. So yeah, it takes a little bit to get used to that, but you know, it's, it's, it's a player preference. Now there's something else. Uh, Four, two weapons are actually, actually two slots are uh, have two weapons in them. In this case, if I press three, I get the shotgun. Press three again, I get the, I mean the super shotgun and the shotgun. And same with uh, rocket launcher and tribal. They're on the same one. I'm pressing R and R R R. It cycles me through these two. Um, you can actually set this weapon separately. Again, weapon binding. And here it is. Uh, by specific weapon if you want to separate the tribal and rocket launcher or shotgun and super shotgun. So, tribal, I like it to G and rocket launcher to R. And as you can see, it's no longer marking R here because this is, is no longer valid. Instead, it's rocket launcher and tribal, shotgun and super shotgun. And in that way, I have each one of the weapons set up to a specific key and they don't get in the way. I can select exactly the weapon that I want. Which is, again, very useful for whenever you're playing, particularly in deathmatch, you always want to pull up the weapon that you want in the moment that you want, you know? So there is that. Alright, so that's the keys, that's the, the main setup of the of the game. Oh, there's another thing, another very important thing. Well, in single player it doesn't matter much, but it does in, in multiplayer. In Doom, there's always auto-aim by default. So look, I'm shooting down here, and yet my bullets are going up there. You see? This is because Doom has auto-aim. In single player it's fine, it doesn't really matter. Um, but I heavily suggest to turn it off uh, so that you get used to it because in that match the weapons don't have auto-aim at all, even if you have it on. 
So, yeah, it's it's up to you really. But I, I particularly like, I personally like to have it off. So you can set it up through the champion screen in auto aim to never, or you can also do it through console. You go auto aim, and there it is. You can set it up to to different numbers, and, and zero means that it's completely off. All right, so I think that's it for the main configurations of, of this thing. Uh, again, the, the engine itself has a ton of options, a lot of options, and I added some options over here for, for the gameplay too, but I've explained this at some other point, so I don't think it's worth going into all that stuff again. Um, Alright, so that's pretty much it for, for this video. In the next video I'm going to show you finally how to do a, a bot match, uh, how to do it through console or f through the uh, user interface of Sandrinum and how to join, well I showed that already, but how to join um, games online. So, alright, thank you so much for watching, I hope this was useful, it was um, informative enough, uh, easy to understand, and yeah, that's it for me. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the third and final part of this guide. Until then, later!